Hello everyone, Pally Time here. Welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. We find our party on the western side of the lower city, just outside of the Steel Watch Foundry. I'm curious what's going on in the Foundry. Normally, that's one of your main objectives in a playthrough. Be the f Foundry has already been blown up. Okay, this is really interesting. We're starting our episode over here because I thought the Wolverine quest was bugged. But isn't it Wolverine's objective to then go after the Steel Watch and blow them up? So perhaps by killing Gortash, Wolverine just ran over here and did this without my knowledge. Well, that's, you know, I feel like I haven't been completely cheated out. There he is, he's right there! Oh my god, I was just looking for him everywhere in between episodes. He's right fucking there, and he's... Wait, Wolverine's looking at Volo? What? Well, welcome to the video. I don't know what's going on anymore. Let's find out together. The Gondian menace is finally over. Nice. Now is the time for the Iron Hand Nose. So I was literally... <laughs> A true leader never forgets those who lifted him up. When the time comes, you may call on the Iron Hand Gnomes. <laughs> We will fight with you to defend this city. It is ours, after all. Okay. Again, I want to stress, I was literally looking for this guy for 20 minutes. We were scouring the wikis, trying to see where he could have been, and he destroyed the Steel Watch building without me. What? Volo, why are you just tied up here? This doesn't make any sense either. <laughs> what a funny introduction. I wonder what's going on with the Iron Throne right now. Volo? Volo? I can't talk to Volo. Of course. I'll break your chair. Did that do what you wanted? <sighs> Sometimes my enlightenment might mean more trouble than it's worth. Is Volo just gonna stand there and hold What's going on, dude? Alright, Captain. I'm telling you. God! I really thought I was done for. Because you were sitting on a chair? Thanks are in order. Again? What's an heroic story without a little risking of one's neck, eh? And you know what they say, the bigger the story, the more people want to kill you for it. <laughs> I'll tell you all about it. But not here. Too many eyes, ears, and where palms about. Meet me at your camp. Okay, friend. So... I believe all of this is a direct result of us killing Gortash during his inauguration in this playthrough. If you missed that, we objected in the throne room and fought him right in front of everyone. Normally going into the Steel Watch Assembly is part of taking down the Gortash quest because these are... Wait, I have even more questions. If the entire place has been exploded, why are the Steel Watch still walking around? Oh, I think Kalark is so strong, he may have broken reality a little bit. Just a bit. Just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Well, since I've ruined one quest line, I think I might be able to take you to another that was bugged in my previous playthrough. I walked into this building before. I believe you're going to have to go way back for this one. Do you remember the Smuggler's Den in Act 1? where we entered and there was a guy who was like, hey, can you buy me away from these guys so I can return home? He was an artist and we even gave him some money for the road. I believe this is his residence, I think. Let's see if we can go inside. A good day to you, sir. I apologize, but Lady Janeth is not currently welcoming visitors. If you are here with regards to her recent marriage, you may leave any gifts or warm wishes with me, and I will ensure she receives them. Curse your luck! What? 
Forgive me. As you can hear, Lady Janeth is indisposed at present. Please come back another time. Is everything okay in there? Your discretion is admirable. Now tell Kalak what's going on. <clears throat> well, of course, that wouldn't be my place to say. Lady Janeth wishes for some time alone with her new spouse and has sent her staff on holiday accordingly. Mm, funny way to spend your holidays stood right outside of your workplace, friend. In ordinary circumstances, I'd appreciate her generosity more fully, but, well, I prefer to be here for when she changes her mind. Can I come in? Were you to try and enter, there'd be nothing I could do to stop you. After all, <laughs> I am on holiday. Ro as you wish. Roger that. Clark just smiles. Thank you, friend. Journal updated. Free the artists. So we are on the right track. It says Lady Janeth's butler, Tarin, indicated to us that something very strange is going on and was clearly unsettled. We should investigate. I've never done this before. So as they come into the room, we immediately see a tree knocked over. Looks like some stuff broken here. Candles that will light. Okay. Uh, chairs floating. Uh, I think there's something weird going on in here. Where do we start looking? Oh, some of my candles burnt out already. Oh, it's a big cellar. Hello? Fuck! What the fuck was that? Help! Help! Help, Kalark! Help me! Help! Help me get all these grease bottles into my inventory. We need these. Um, Gail, did you light us on fire? I'm gonna... I'm gonna go this way. What the fuck? Oh god! Oh god! Oh! We're being attacked! Everyone, leave, leave, quickly! Leave, leave the building! Get out of here! Do you think this is a sea invisibility kind of situation? It kind of seems like it. Well, shit! All right, Kalark's gonna break off from the rest of the group. He's going to, uh... No, Kalark's not gonna be the one that does this. It's actually gonna be Lazale, the bravest of all of us. Uh, she is going to cast the invisibility on herself. The reason I don't want to do it on Kalark is it would replace uh, one of my elixirs. I did this earlier on accident when I thought Astarian was the one drinking, but it was actually Kalark, so we're gonna be very careful. Now, this does last until long rest, so I don't need to rush or anything. But Lazel's going to cautiously enter the building again and drink a potion before she does that. So, it was over here, right? Hey! Poltergeist! <laughs> Cut it out! Oh, there's two of them in here. No shit. Let me go ahead and cast a Hex so I can get some bonus damage. I want to kill a target as fast as I can, if possible. Perfect. Now we're going to move towards the other one. Is she just going to start throwing things at me? Oh, there are many poltergeists in this building. Uh, opportunity attack. Throwing grease at me. No, don't make it more difficult. The poltergeist on the far side of the room rushes for... I swear to God, it's going to throw this candle at me, isn't it? Man, I called that. I called that all day long. I hate it when I'm right. Lazelle recasts Hex on her new opponent, the poltergeist behind her. 36 HP remaining. We slice. One more. And kill the target. We move towards the other poltergeists. 
and take it down. Lazel, the ghost hunter, then makes her way into the next room. There's another poltergeist! <laughs> well, another in the next room. We cut this one into pieces, if that is a thing you can do. Now, now I've, I've heard of poltergeists before. I don't know if I'm a believer that they're real, okay, but isn't it normally like one haunting per house? Be, kind of weird it had multiple poltergeists, right? I mean, look at Hogwarts. They had one and it didn't even make it into the movies. Oh, there's another one. Oh, I see you. It's almost like they're surprised that I can spot them. Lizel does have alert, so she would go f go first in in most combat interactions anyway. But it does seem like I'm catching him off guard. I'm going to use the inner staircase here. This house is ultra haunted. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, we have been spotted again, this time by three. Uh, by five poltergeists that aren't even in the same room as me. Oh, okay. I could see how they spotted me, though, I guess. Are they going to be moving down here? And also, what's going on with these lamps? Oh, yeah, that makes sense that they don't need to use the stairs. That push did 16 damage to me there as Lazel is now laying on her back. What would the elder poltergeists do here so far? Oh, they do begin to fly down. Is it going to be another push? 18 damage. Wonder if I can blind a poltergeist. Oh, no, no. Put that back. Put that back. We don't need you to bring that with you. You guys are already doing 18 fucking damage for a push. This one just flew through the floor. Like, literally just through the floor. Wait, what are these things? Cursed skulls. Oh, shit. Oh. Okay, I have a theory. Am I going to need to get Gale up there to... Um, to cleanse those skulls of the curse? There may only be a certain number of poltergeists, so I'm starting to get worried that they might continue to come back if we don't get rid of that curse. Uh, I'm gonna cast Darkness, and I'm just gonna sit here and drink a potion. That's gonna be my turn. We'll let these guys figure out what they want to do. Uh, and Lazel will stay right here. As they are doing that, Elminster's not around, so it might as well. Gale gets down. Uh, I do not have remove curse prepared. We just swapped it out, but we can get it again. It is a level three spell slot, and I only have two of those, so I don't think I can cure all the... Th Wait, we can get this back. Replenish one spell slot, so I just got a level three back. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of hold person, because these aren't people, and we'll get remove curse. Lazel is beat the fuck up, only 32 HP remaining, and that's after using a big, 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 po uh, big potion. Uh, we are going to let Kalark swing first as he approaches the poltergeist. And because his fists count as magical weapons, he doesn't simply move through the target. We dealt damage to the ghost. Gale still looks like he can do something. Uh, could we possibly get a somewhat contained fireball out here? Does look like the positioning is a little weird, probably because our path is interrupted. Let's move up just a bit more. Uh, this fireball will not hit Lazel. Oh, it is a level three spell though, isn't it? Good damage. I'm gonna have to figure out some way of casting. Oh, I guess I can just upcast curse. Yeah, that's that's no problem. All right, we do need to save his spell slots then. It is Lazelle's turn right now. She is currently, she has Phantasmal Force Psychic on her. I really don't even know what that means. We're gonna cut into the poltergeist on the left. Nice run around. And then with no more movement left, we will do nothing to the one on the right. It approaches Lazelle and gets 
Level four gets counterspelled. That was looking kind of spicy. Ah, all right. Lazel's going to cast Lay on Hands and heal herself. Greater healing, cure. Wait, cure? Well, that doesn't get rid of curses, right? <laughs> Coach Todisi, thank you for the 14 months. Uh, we will cast Greater Healing. Give us a health potion worth of health back. Uh, Kalark is then going to continue up the stairs and keep punching into the back of the poltergeist. We get a critical hit and follow that up with another. Lazel is hurt, but we will... Whoa, we're all getting hit by this now? It like got off. I bet it's because of the lamp, isn't it? Get away from the lamp. Everyone together. Oh my God. Oh my God. Short rest. Turn base mode. Jesus, <laughs> this place is gnarly. Okay, this does have a haunting aura. Nearby creature, yes, that is exactly what's doing it. So Kalark, with his enlightenment, notices this happening. He approaches the lamp and... Wow, really had a run up on that. Oh my God, the, the chandelier spawned another phantom. Uh, Lazel can't make it there. Kalark is close, but doesn't have an attack action. Don't you worry, I don't need one. Okay. Turn base mode. Turn base. Turn base mode. Please, please. They fuck me. Everyone's dying. I am spamming the enter turn base. I am literally. Thank you. I pressed it fifty fucking times. Now, Gail, please remove curse. Did that help? I don't know. God. It was like the game was calculating too many things at once and wouldn't let me, or like maybe the world was still in motion when I was pressing. I don't know what was going on, but that was frustrating. I was trying to pause that so many times. I don't either, Lazel. Let's not talk about this now. Okay, back in fighting form. All right, everyone gathered together. Let's get down. And keep trying to go upstairs. No, don't pickpocket your friends, God damn it! I imagine the worst of this has to be up. Okay, turn base mode. Remove curse. Move curse right here. Can't reach destination, so get closer. It's not a. Me oh, it is a melee ability. Shit. Okay, just go do it. Just go do it. Just go. Go, 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 go. Should I just be attacking these? Hold on. Eldritch Blast! Move up. Oh. Oh, I was way overthinking this. Oh. Okay. We'll just hit turn base mode again. Eldritch Blast. Eh, send one over there, too. Uh, that candle's haunted. Well, Eldritch Blast that. That spawns in another Poltergeist. Lazelle's already done her action, so it's up to Gale, who... Wait, she doesn't see Kalark yet. Oh, and you're looking the wrong way. This one is a tormented soul and not a poltergeist. This one's different. Yet it dies just the same. Another cursed skull in the corner. There are so many. And what the fuck does this have to do with the artist that we saved? Hold on. Creep, creep, creep. Don't commit too much. I thought there would be a skull in the corner and I was right. Let's get rid of that. Without delay. Uh, oh. Oh. Now this does look like a someplace an artist would stay. 
I am failing a lot of perception checks right now, though. What's that? Hey, isn't that the guy I saved? What? Does that work? Leave him. He is mine. Okay, I think it's probably the dude. Tormented soul. Swing. Swing again. Uh, swing again. Oh, I bet that's the wife. And then we put the husband on the other one. I bet that's it. I bet that's it. So we'll drag that in here and combine. There's more to this artwork than meets the eye. <gasps> and then that opened up this door. Whoa. Lazel has leveled up. The painting of a smiling maiden. A rustic chest. Come on, Clark. You just got to roll a 20. Come on, Clark. It's not that hard. You see? You roll 20s all the time, my dude. Get it open. A letter to Oscar Fervis. This parchment is old, flaky, and smells faintly of tomb musk. Dearest Miss Fervis, I so appreciated the desperation of your correspondence. Heartbreak can impose such a terrible burden in my humble role as an inter... inter... Locator, with the spirit realm, I believe I might be able to offer you some reprieve. Bring this letter to my mansion near the seafront, and together we will see if the dead have peace to offer you. Your, yours in spirit, Mystic Carrion. The door is regrettably stubborn, so you must speak its preferred words. Secreta Motorium. PPS. I may even consider a discounted rate if you're willing to recommend my services to Lady Janeth's well-coined kinfolk. For the eyes of Lady Janeth only, the occasional smear of oil paints splotches the hastily quilled letter. My dearest Lady Janeth, I write to inform you of my progress on your portrait and my struggles therein. You see, while my skills at capturing the continents is considered far superior to the other brush folk of our good city, it is lacking in one particular aspect. My memory of your form is far inferior to the purest beauty I beheld when you first sat with me. How can I finish a masterpiece without confidence in my grasp of its subject? I beg of you, sit for me again. Allow me to finish this portrait in proper fashion with its ravishing subject firmly grasped within my gaze. Yours, Oscar Fervis. Wow. Way with words, that guy. Uh, I'm going to take that with me. Then we have an unsent letter. Thanks for running in the way, Gail. I appreciate it. Carrie, my darling. I'm not sure why I'm writing this. Where you've gone to, no pigeon could deliver it. Still, if there's some part of you watching over my shoulder as I sit here, I beg of you, leave me be. You feel my every thought, my dreams, my nightmares. Is there no reprieve from the memory of your face? The look of disappointment you cast upon me each time I close my eyes. I cannot take much more of this. I must be rid of you. I must. The last sentence is too smudged to read. Oh, and I didn't even realize the painting of the Smiling Maiden is in the middle of some kind of symbol. The portrait is ice cold to the touch, filling you with a sense of overwhelming dread. So why is the woman smiling? <laughs> it's haunted! Oh no! Well, our party is traveling clear over to the other side of the lower city. We read about Mystic Carrion in that building. And it just so happens I know where his shop is set up over on the eastern side. We actually walked right next to this place. The fireworks, the fireworks store is right here. I was just across the street from it. Now, he said the door doesn't open. But it's of a rancid... Set into the mansion's faded exterior, you see the faintest outline of a door. A 
an entrance designed to provide the utmost discretion. The door pulses with a heavy, melancholic magic. Whatever lies behind it concerns the living and the dead. You sense it waits for the right words. It requires permission to open. Well, we know the password. The door shudders. It has no choice but to let you inside. Mystic carrion awaits. Oh, that's creepy. If the door outside is magic, maybe we should have our wizard approach first. As he enters the room, he levels up too. I'm just kind of waiting on the whole party so I can do it at once. Uh, we're gonna drink a quick potion, open up the door and head inside. Mystic Carrion is in front of us. You do not have an appointment. Yet you seek an audience with Mr. Carrion. Ah, yes. You were drawn to me. A wanderer bearing the scent of death. Oh! You are familiar with the necromancy of Fae. That's the book we found in I the vaults of Sorcerer Sundry. Its name. Few books have the power to send a shiver through the living and the dead. Tell me, what did you make of its contents? Um, you're familiar with the subject matter. Such a book is for those who make only the shallowest ripples in death dark pools. I inhabit the depths. Clearly these are not waters you know how to swim in. I would hate to be the one who helps you drown. Perhaps one day the book will reveal its secrets to you. Until then, they're best left between its covers. Unless you have any other business with me, I suggest you return to the domain of the living. Well, I'm going to leave. We're going to talk to him on Astarian, the one who actually read the book. Should have just had the bard come in first anyway. Oh, my God. Very strange tidings. Here we go. Here we go. Again, you dis my client list is full. Oh. And you are not on it. Well, I guess it was just the, the first one then. Uh, I, I offered to help Oscar and I found your letter. The painter. Yes, I remember. He wanted to contact a tormented spirit. I gave him exactly what he desired. And for a pittance, given the complexity of his request, his inability to follow simple instructions is hardly my fault. If he wanted his safety guaranteed, that would have cost him extra. Who is he trying to contact? My clients are guaranteed absolute privacy in their consultations with myself and my spirits. I assume you came to me seeking an exorcism? Yeah, probably. I can provide you with the means to perform such a ceremony. But you understand, this is my livelihood. First, you must do something for me. What do you need, friend? What kind of service? Well, can't I just pay you instead, like, if it's your livelihood? So ready to part with your gold, to save yourself the bother of helping someone? Perhaps you are more like my usual customers than I thought. <laughs> Very well. You may purchase Oscar's salvation if you can afford it. 3,000 gold? That's high. Uh, tell me what you need. I'll just do your little side quest for you. I'm happy to do that. Do not worry. It is of an earthly nature. It regards a conduit of mine, from who has recently deserted his duties. He has not gone far, but given the sensitivity of his nature, I would prefer that he is not free to roam the city. Return Thrumbo's body to me, then I will give you what you need to cleanse Oscar of his spectral interloper. Crossboss, thank you so much for the 31 months. Well, his body, it sounds like you want him killed. My child, that would be asking the impossible. 
He is already dead. He is... Uh, what do they call them here? Ah, a zombie. A waif I rescued from the jaws of death and gave a second chance at earthly purpose. If he does not value the gift I gave in reanimating that wretched flesh of his, then I will take it back. It is my property, not his. Uh, Baldur's Gate's a very big city, friend, and her name is not much to go on. Had I thought you were the type to shout his name from the rooftops, I would never <laughs> have offered you the job. I'm starting to get the impression Somehow this guy doesn't like me. In his ingratitude, he has led others in my service astray. Three of them, beggars and zombies alike. The others lack even Thrombo's modicum of intelligence. It should be no great task to wring his location from one of them. Very well. I bring you Thrumbro and you agree to free Oscar. Is that a deal? Then, with the spirits herein, our witnesses, the arrangement is made. They will follow your progress with great interest. As will I. Interesting. Very interesting. Astarian's going to stay here for a moment I've done well. as the rest of our party gathers oh, together. Nice. And we are going to warp to the Basilisk Gate right at the start. I know the location of one undead, and I also know the dialogue that he has. And I think Kalark would really enjoy talking to him. Come to have a go. Give it your best shot. My best shot? What? An air of decay hangs over the stooped beggar's form. The same that tainted mystic Carrion's chambers. This is one of his runaway servants. Gold first. Then you can hit me. Hit you? Oh, that sounds wonderful. Pay the gold. Oh, I hit very fast. Are you sure you're up to it? It's not a flat fee. You pay per punch, mate. Faster you hit, faster I make coin. <laughs> so, you having a go or not? Uh, maybe first I should get some information. Oh, okay, I'll pay the gold. Yes, I'll pay the gold. Come here. Come here. Come to me. Come here. Why are you running? Let me hit you. Said I could hit you. <laughs> that wasn't a freebie, you dumb fuck. Back for more. I don't mind. So long as you're paying. Oh, that was really fun. I'll do it again if you could tell me a little bit about Thrumbo. Have you heard of him? Carrion sent you. Shit. Don't think about trying anything. I'll fight back. <laughs> I just spit on my monitor. <laughs> he just made me literally do a spit take. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Relax, bud. The boss just wanted to give you and Thrumbo a proper send-off. Uh, do you need anything, friend? Oh, uh, it's deception. I am going to call upon my astral knowledge for help with charisma. We need an 18. We rolled a 19. He did. I suppose. I mean, really? Thrombo was going to get us a boat, but I haven't heard from him since. He must be somewhere near the water. I just hope he didn't drown. There's a lot of stuff near the water, and I don't know where Thrumbo is. But our entire party just leveled up, so let's take a look. Kalark becomes a level 8 monk, 3 thief. He gets a new feat available to him, and with that feat, I'm going to take an ability improvement. We're going to pump our wisdom up a bit. Oh, it feels weird to own... Maybe I need to respect Kalark just a little bit. Now that we're in Act 3, I think I should be able to get a flat 20 Wisdom, and that will scale really well with the boots that we have. For now, we'll go with this, though. Very easy level up. Like I said, might do some readjusting of stats in the future. Not going to bother with it right now. Astarian becomes a level 10 Bard, one Cleric. He gains many new things. Look at this. New cantrip. 
They're not as exciting as they used to be. Let's pick up Mage Hand. I can become proficient in another skill. Maybe I should have Astarian be opening up all of my things. We're already good at perception. We don't have anyone that does animal handling. Oh my god. Oh my god. Plus 13 on persuasion and intimidation? That's insane. That's really good. Wow. Uh, spells. Dominate person seems appropriate. It really does. Seems seems good. Oh, God. For magical secrets, though. <gasps> Chat! Look, it's daylight! We've been talking about this spell all day. We'll just get that on a star. We'll just add that to his list really fast. The vampire armed with sunlight. <laughs> yeah. He has conquered his domain. <laughs> I might actually go for something like this. Gaseous form. I could definitely find a scenario where that would be very, very useful. Gale becomes a level 11 wizard and gains action, access to two more spells. <gasps> oh, create two linked teleportation portals. Arcane gate, I've never seen that before, ever. Globe of invulnerability certainly could be good. We'll add that to the list. I like your idea. You take arcane gate because there's scrolls for the other stuff. That's a very good idea. So we have a globe of invulnerability, which we can use to keep ourselves safe and arcane gate if we want to teleport around anywhere. And last, but definitely not least, Lazel. Debating what I want to do here. You and your allies gain a plus zero bonus to saving throws. Wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, what I could do on Lazel is go fight her at this point, and we might be able to grab Action Surge, which would make her even more of a menace on the battlefield. She can attack eight times in a turn. That's kind of wild. I'm doing it. We're going fight her. Lazel's going to have a crazy round in the future, and it's all going to be because of this. We also get to pick a fighting style. Well, great weapon fighting, obviously. And then defense, maybe? Perfect. Let's go. Now, there is a lot of water in Baldur's Gate. I wonder where this zombie is trying to find a boat. I'm just going to run to the coast and start looking. Although logic would say that he wouldn't try to find a boat right next to where he was trying to leave, right? Why am I in combat? Oh, God. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, Lazel. Any particular reason you stopped right there? Did you see this coming? How dare you? Uh, can she get a little bit closer? We could use our bonus action to Misty step in. Hello! Uh, she's not quite up in the turn order just yet. Uh, and Kalark is actually pinned. Whoa! Ensnared, unable to move this turn. Well, luckily for us, Kalark is still a tavern brawler. He is going to go into his bags and throw a javelin at one of the further away. What, what are these things? They're like murlocs, right? They're like Naga? More like Naga, coming out of the water. Uh, unfortunately, critical miss on the second throw and we can't do anything else with his turn. If they shoot a ranged attack at me, I'll at least be able to deflect that back into them. But no, an instinctive charm for Gale as he dodges the web as well, or the net as well. Blood Frenzy! So this is the barbarian equivalent of a Naga coming towards us right now. And with Lazel in their sights. Now, I have not done this yet on Gale, but once he hit level 11, he gained the ability to cast enchantment spells on multiple targets. So if I do like a crown of madness here, and then maybe like a crown of madness here, they won't be able to differentiate friend from foe, and they'll just attack the closest targets to them uh, to help us out a little bit more. That will end Gale's turn. We're going to look to Lazel next, who turns to her left and starts swinging. That's half of this creature's health down in a single swing. Make that even more. We are gonna get attack of opportunity here as I move a little bit closer to the other side, but I want to be away from the Crown of Madness enemy, and we're going to use our Great Weapon Master bonus swing to kill off yet another target. She backs up, and Gale ends his turn. 
Nice. I like this spell a lot. <laughs> it also makes him make like really silly decisions. Like there's no reason an archer should shoot at someone that close. The ensnare effect has ended. I'm going for the crown of madness one. I thought, there we go. Oh my God. Uh, let me hit the other one too. See what our damage is looking like. Okay, I'm gonna do an offhand strike here. At, at the enemy, please. Right. Okay. It's gotta be a headshot or nothing else connects. Good to know. The archer on the side looks towards Gale again. The instinctive charm not available this time. He takes eight damage to the side of his body. Oh, make that 14 damage. The creature next to Kalark turns around and jabs that spear directly into his stomach. Goes in again, getting a critical hit this time around too. Kalark's starting to feel the damage. We go after the hunt. She is so terrifying. I am so glad that Lazel is on my side, dude. Could you imagine if she was controlling the absolute? We would all be screwed. Bonus swing here as well as she goes for the final enemy. Actually, not the final enemy. We are going to see a magic missile from Gale. What? Why are the guards here? Guards, you're not about to accuse me of something, are you? Why did you all just... You're not even helping me take the creatures down. The city guard, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Wow. We're, it's so good that they're here. I love that. Oh, yeah. Kalark goes in with another punch. You were witnessed assaulting someone. Excuse me? For the cells. Excuse me. No. 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 That wasn't a fight. You want to see what I am really capable of? This is Lazel speaking, as far as I know. Oh, hypnotic gaze <laughs> gives advantage. <laughs> nice, the 18. You're free to go. That's what I thought. Time. That's what I thought. <sighs> Wait. Thank you for cutting those creatures down, truly. Gods know what would have happened if you weren't here. Well, you know, the guards wouldn't have saved you. <laughs> We're going to head up to this small building just north of the water here and take a quick look. It is technically breaking in. But is there anyone home? Oh, a hatch leads down. I should definitely have a star in picking these locks. But we rolled an at 20 anyway. Oh, is Astarian actually here now? Hello! I was having him stay over at the Carrion's place. I guess he got a little too creeped out and decided to come over here. Oh, this is a very cluster. Whoa! Tripwire. Clark breaks off. What is a lever? What? Step carefully. There's a trap. And a shipment trunk in here too. This place looks like it's gonna go off with a bunch of explosions if we're not careful. I don't think I can really reach this. So what I'm gonna do is put a mage hand up there. Although it looks like there's not even enough space for that. Uh, so, what I'm going to do instead, the third option, I'm going to throw a javelin at it. Whoa. Okay, let me make sure I'm not stepping on a tripwire. Whose house is this? And, well, if this was the boat he was trying to leave on... Be wary. Oh! Oh, yeah. Should have seen that coming. Should have seen that coming. The rest of the building was trapped, too. All right, point taken. I don't think there's anything here. This must not be the right place. Hmm. They might have some clothes for me, though. Leave me be. <laughs> what? What are you doing here? <laughs> the man's stench is unmistakable. Death, decay, despair. 
This must be Thrumbo, the runaway Mystic Carrion was so eager for you to retrieve. This is my spot. Go on, find your own. Thrumbo, have you thought about maybe not doing your plot to escape immediately next door to the person you're trying to escape from? This is a very large city with a lot of water access, my friend. <sighs> Carrion wants me to bring you home. Mystic. Carrion. You're working for him? Yep. Oh, no. No, no. I knew he wouldn't let us leave in peace. You don't have to help him. He's the one you should be after, not me. Why do you say that? Why? You've met him. How can you need more justification than that? He, he murdered me. Murdered my friends. Snatched us right up from the dark side and, and made us these, these things. Wait, that's actually horrible. Monsters. Fit for gutting and, and grinding and, and desecrating the dead. He constantly abuses us. Makes us do the, the worst things you can imagine. There used to be five of us. My friend Dallas, he couldn't take it anymore. One day, I saw him drive a coffin nail right through Carrion's skull. Then another, and another. We thought he had done it. Freed us all. Then when dawn came, Talus seized up suddenly like something had got a grip of him. We ran to help, but he just exploded. I got so much blood and, and pulp in my eyes. When I look back, Carrion was just stood there completely unarmed. Oh God, that's horrible. Do you know how the Carrion brought himself back? If I knew that, I'd have tried to kill him myself. I know this is going to sound strange, but I've been watching him, trying to figure it out, and I think he's a mummy lord. What makes you think? And I, I don't know what a mummy lord is. It's an ancient evil being who refused to die, who cannot die. I used to hear about them in stories, and I can't think of another explanation. After Talus died, Carrion blindfolded me and took me into a strange place. A foul and ancient place. Somewhere the living wouldn't dare to tread. Down there, he showed me a jar. Said it contained the secret to eternal life. And if I behaved, he would share it with me. I, I think it was his heart. I'm not stupid. I know what he did to my friend. Gods, how I'd love to smash that bastard jar. That's how you kill mummy lords, you know. Mm. I will find and destroy this jar, my friend. Where should I start? I'm not sure. But in the house, beneath Carrion's salon, there's a chamber. He never lets anyone down there, so it must be hiding something important. Perhaps it's there. But be careful if you return to Carrion. He'll know you spoke to me. Make sure he doesn't see or smell you. He'll turn you into one of us, and he'll know I sent you. I don't want to die like Talis did. I want to live. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I do know what you mean. This is still the safest place to hide. It's just bad luck I was discovered. I must be patient. My brothers need me. We need to help this poor man. His life was taken to him and he was meant to be like a life of servitude that he never asked for. But if the mystic seizes me, that's not good either. Lucky for us, we do have greater vi invisibility on our bard that we could use to look around the house while being unseen, hopefully. The Starion's gonna break off from the rest of the party and cast greater invisibility on himself. I have 10 turns to move around here and I need to do it quick. Now, is there anything in that room behind him? Perhaps, but I'm gonna go upstairs. I could see through the floor for a moment. Can't go there. 
You, that's because you need to open the door. Come on, Astarian, you can do this. 12 rolls up to a 23. He's in. Wait, I thought greater invisibility wouldn't fade like that. I thought that was the entire point of greater invisibility. Well, let's just cast regular invisibility. Do any of these doors Very well, lead to... Oh, this door's locked too. Go, go, quickly, quickly, quickly. Get down. Oh, that doesn't... Oh, that doesn't look good. Hello, beautiful. <sighs> if only it was... <gasps> Okay. Okay. We got to kill this guy 100%. Is it just me or does this look? A stone wall opens up. And a ladder leads down. Oh. Hatch, is this the basement? Whoa. You know, compared to the rest of the house, this is a pretty nice basement. It does look like there might be a way for me to sneak out as well. That's what he just perceived. Elixir of necrotic resistance and a mummy's memories. Some mortals might wonder why a mummy lord would abandon a subterranean crypt where he was... He is a mummy lord where he was abated for several human lifetimes, safely conducting delicate experiments into the very nature of life and its so-called opposite death, and trade all of, that, uh, all of that for a perilous experience in a ramshackle waterfront house in the cesspit known as Baldur's Gate. Some mortals might be morons. An entity of erudition and taste must naturally have a keen appreciation for all the surface world has to offer. The lit of music and lyricism of poetry, the cry of seagulls over Grey Harbor at sunset, the touch of a soft, non-decayed hand. <laughs> you don't need a nose to savor a fine wine. All these things and more I have earned through my dedication to esoteric studies. And, but all of these things are well as rare alchemy ingredients, alembics and and. The Nors cost money, a lot of it. Thus, my new career is a high price and exclusive mystic consultant to the wealthy of the upper city. I have needs, and they will not be denied. Down in the ruins under the city. Do we spot any jars here? that might contain his heart. Or is that hidden under the city? When is it my turn? Wait, does Gash's form just last? <laughs> We're gonna head down to the sewers. In order to do that, I teleported over to Baldur's Gate, and this is just on the other side of where that assassination was taking place. There's a sewer entrance that leads us down there. There are many ways of entering the sewers of Baldur's Gate. However, I'm picking the west side because I'm trying to avoid certain things for now. Uh, this might be one of them. That's curious. Uh, hey, Halson. No, you can't be here. It's not safe. She has my scent. Run, do not stop until you feel sunlight and fresh air. What are you running from? <laughs> Whatever you're running from, it holds no threat to me, Housen. This is no threat. This is a certainty. Orin is coming. <laughs> she tormented me with blades and, and hot irons. I resisted. But then she forced me to drink a foul brew. The rabid, cursed blood of all manner of beasts. I lost control. I felt the bear 
take over. Blood crazed. And she forced me into a cave. Oh my god. Along with... Oh my god. With children taken from the streets. And you killed him as a bear? I was powerless to stop myself. More. Their screams. Her laughter. It's all I can hear. I do not deserve to see the sun again. She's too strong. You have to turn around. Go. Let me buy you some time. She's coming for you. Failed stealth check. I'm not leaving you behind, house, and you're coming with me! Fool. Rabbit beasts must not be coddled. They must be put down. I knew it. There's no way Housen would go outside. Crawling and sniffing and rooting around in the filth. Is it my nether stone you seek, little piggy? Hush, hush. Orin will take care of you and your little pet. What have you done with Housen? Nothing. No, not a thing. <laughs> Still gasping and gagging on the foul airs of Baal's temple. <laughs> I will not slice. His kind die too easily. The murder lord demands a better offering. Something new. Sticky, sweet, and delicious. He wants you. <laughs> The murder lord wants me, why? Gortash's tyrant blood has cured your hide. You are almost fit for Ball's blade at last. But first, first you must be cleansed, bathed in the murder lord's sight. You must face his tribunal, seek grandfather's blessing. Only then will you be permitted to return. Refuse, and I will slick Ball's sanctum with your plaything sacrifice instead. We will be waiting for you, chosen killer. I thought it was supposed to be a big reveal that the you know her, her grandfather was involved in this. I've never had a scenario where Orin was alive. And uh, w without, uh, I've never had a scenario where Gortash was killed first and Orin is still let to run free. Uh, it seems kind of weird that she just spilled that information out to us. Very strange indeed. Well, after traveling across these sewers, I've made it up to this northern path right here. This leads us into an area we are definitely not going right now. But if we look to the west, I believe this is the crypt that the mummy was talking about in this passageway here. If it's not, I literally have no other ideas on where to find this guy's heart. Astarian's here by himself right now, so if things go bad, ooh, he's gonna need help. Find the source of his immortality. Dozens of chests scattered around this room. A spear in the middle. I shall ascend with him immortality practically. Oh, greater zombies around the room too. Yeah, suddenly I'm not feeling as good about this. Astarian called in some backup. Well, let's take a quick look around. Clark might be able to perceive something. So far, I'm not seeing any jars here. Although it does look like something <laughs> might be this way. Oh. 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 That woke literally everyone up. Uh, Lazelle is going to cast Darkness. And in her turn. 
Let's see what all of these undead end up doing. They're running into the darkness to reach us, trying to use claws on Gale. Uh, luckily for us, none of those are connecting. Clark's gonna try to hit the wall again. Smashed it. Okay, there is some stuff glowing in this room. Does anything look like a jar with a... That's his brain. Is that what we were after? I thought it was a heart this whole time. Well, at least we see it. Gale turns around to face the zombies and casts abso fucking lutely nothing because he can't see. He's going to... Mm, I don't have Misty Step to get back. This is kind of a weird spot to be in. I could run over to Astarian and maybe Dimension Door him in here. Uh, what we could do as well is do a... I don't know if zombies can be hypnotized, but we could try something like that. Here, let me go ahead and select Lizelle. We'll just end her concentration early. We can do that off of her turn. That's gonna make this a little easier to figure out. And then wall of fire all the way from the right over to the left. Something like that. Gail, please. <laughs> please, Gail, just do the one thing I'm asking you to do this once, please. <laughs> Thank you, my good man. Now, there's a lot of zombies over here on the western corner and on the southern side that are going to be trying to come towards us. And that's pretty frightening. Uh, I don't have Dimension Door to get me around this, so we could take the gaseous form again. Would that allow me to move through this? For now, I'm just going to sit there because it will help my defenses. Meanwhile, Kalark turns around and does an offhand swing onto one of the ancient servants that have risen up from the ground to meet us. Uh, toppling flurry of blows to follow that up, and we end his turn. Gale, feeling good about his turn as well, ends his. Now we start to see zombies dashing in from the sides. As they hit that fire, that's going to hurt. This one's stopping just a few feet short. The mummy next to Lazelle swings but does miss her Target. Another zombie. Ooh, a mummy running through the fires stops on the wrong spot. Oh, no. Oh, the way those hands move is actually so creepy. An instinctive charm is going to try to stop this zombie from attacking me again, but he is immune. If he's immune to charms, he might also be immune to being hypnotized. That hit on Gale not only almost killed him, but broke his concentration as well. The wall has fallen. And now Astarian is being swung at in his gaseous form. Lazel dodges that attack as we see what the final two mummies are going to do. On the other side, they managed to frighten Gale with a cast. Oh no. And we see another attempted fear. Lazel swings on the ancient servant to her right. That kill gives me an extra swing where we swing again on the claw next to us. She then turns and looks at the greater zombie and takes his head clean off of his shoulders. Now looking at the final of the ancient servant, she calls upon her god for a divine smite. Not bad, not bad, we take those. The hand on the other side, well, those hands dealt 16 damage? Can't take much more. What? 16? What? Did it... Did it poke you in the eye? <laughs> Kalark's gonna take that one down, move towards the mummy, hit her in the stomach, and then try to get over to the hand, the most deadly creature we have ever seen. Uh, he's going to continue to work his way towards Starry, and unfortunately, he cannot do a free attack, so I'm going to do a toppling on the greater zombie to bring him down to the floor. Uh, Starian is still in his little gaseous form. Uh, he's going to just walk away. Attacks of opportunity shouldn't bother him too much. Nice. As I make my way over to our team, we are going to cast a mass healing word. Try to get Gale feeling a little bit better. We're also going to use our Paladin spell, Warden of Vitality, and I can use this as a bonus action to heal him up next turn as well. That's going to do it for Starry, and that's going to do it for Kalark. And now Gale. <laughs> Gale says, hold on. You didn't hear me the first time? Wall of Fire! 
he took damage from something. I don't know what, but it killed him. It killed him real bad. <laughs> what did hit him? Uh, Gale got experience. Wall of fire. Zombies. Gale, no. Kalark said that. Gale was hit for necrotic damage. You receive 8 to 48 necrotic damage for casting a level 4 spell while you have spell rot. Oh my god, I didn't even know that was a mechanic. All right. All right, I'll have to keep an eye out for that. Uh, Starion on his turn is going to use that Warden of Vitality to help out Gale, just like we talked about. He gets back up on his feet. We still have a bonus action. We'll just heal him again. Uh, meanwhile, Lazel brings that sword out yet again, going for the Ancient Servant. One HP remaining kind of makes me sad, but she'll just swing again. Move up towards the next one and use her bonus action swing, followed by a big old weapon swing. <laughs> one more time. Yes, 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 that will do. That will do. Kalark does a toppling blow on the greater zombie in front of him, turns around to smack the hand crawling on the ground on the other side. And we finish off all of the beings that have risen up. We do not have a short rest just yet. Let me regroup my party. We'll, um, ooh, ooh, spell slots are looking kind of dire at the moment. Kind of dire at the moment. If we move through this door, happening. though... But it looks very creative. Can we just... Oh! Okay, I didn't see that coming. But he's, is he no longer mortal? We broke the jar that houses his brain? That has to mean something. I wonder if I could have controlled him or something if I didn't break it. I just wanted to get it out of there. I've been working so hard for this. Come on, try again. You can do it. Thank you. Do you think that was a trap? <gasps> wait, here's his liver too. Wait, 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 wait. Was I right that I do have to find his heart and these are all distractions? Is that real? Because that was just his brain. Um, well, I'm going to shoot it from here. He still took damage. A jar, form, and function. I think that's just something I read. Let's look at it. It's like a tablet. The upper part of this tablet describes the necromantic ritual spells employed to inhere portions of a creature's spirit within the extracted organs and then sealing the spirit-infused organs inside funerary urns and hiding them to preserve the life force contained therein. The bottom of the stone is crossed by a scratching of crooked letters that decipher as follows. A brilliant idea, but not an idea of genius such as the concept it inspires in me. Where better to hide such precious treasure than inside the animated body of a guardian who doesn't even know it's there? Oh no. He stashed his canopic jar inside a zombie. <laughs> the clever boy. Oh no, is that the zombie that we found in the wardrobe? You came back. Please. Oh no. Tell me you found a way oh, to Oh no. Mystic Carrion. Great news. I have found a way. And it's inside your chest. How do you wish to proceed? What? His right heart was inside of me this whole time. Yes, sorry friend. <gasps> Get it out! I have to get it out! Oh, he just threw it up! Oh, that's good! That's good! That's good! Uh, we'll just pick that up. Thank you. That slimy bastard! He hid it in me the whole time! Please, take that foul thing and grind it to dust! Better yet, I'm going to explode it. It's going to be wonderful. Gale, take the shot. Oh, shit. Get away from that. Get away from that. There you go. Perfect. I really like that all he had to do was throw up. 
And that's how we got rid of the heart. I really like that. Oh, I've noticed you've got a lot of guardians now. Well, <laughs> I was... they did warn me that he was just going to attack me when I showed up again. I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. Uh, Lazel is going to cast Hex onto the mummy straight across from her in this first room. She then moves up with her silver sword. Beautiful damage. What do you say we close this door? Another fight. Uh, Kalark is going to stand next to Gale. Starion's going to kind of move back. Oh, he's not his turn yet. So, okay, we'll end these. I feel okay about this. Uh, Lazel's going to walk slightly closer to the door, and she'll just end right there. We'll see how they react to this. I imagine it's just going to be opening the door. But it looks like he attacked his friend or something there. Attack of opportunity as he rolls through, dealing pretty good damage to his back. We then see Alistar back up just a little bit, fire off his crossbows. Good damage, but not enough to kill the target outright. We're going to close the door again. I'm just going to stand right there. I'm fine. He can't see me to cast. All right, Gail's going to open the door. Uh, can't take actions because I'm noxious. Gail's going to close the door. <laughs> Gale also can't move away because everyone's crowding him, so Gale ends his turn. Wait, we can play the sad flute. Perfect. I kind of think because there's no room to move on the other side that they won't do anything with the door at all. Could have jumped. No, that's an action. Come on over, guys. <laughs> Man, I... If only I had a spell that could do a large amount of damage in a very small area. Did I call Styrian Alistar? I probably did. I'm getting tired. This episode is taking the life out of me. Uh, we are not noxious. So, Lazel is going to swing on to the zombie that was ruining everyone else's turn. Although it seems as though the stench is remaining. Can I, um... That doesn't help. Clark can't attack either. He's noxious. Gale will be able to next turn. Starion is nox no noxious. Uh, can I pick up the body? And then... Drop it over here. All right, Tipo, settle down. <laughs> I kind of thought that would move the gas effect with it. It was a good idea. It was worth a try. Uh, I guess Kalark's going to stand right there. Lazel will continue to hold the door. And... Astarian can't cast anything either, so he's just going to back up a little bit here. Hello! That's my wizard in front of the door. Yes. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> oh, no. What was that? What did he just cast? Latest. It was called explosive something. Okay, it doesn't matter. Gale does have his turn with him now, and he is going to cast a level six fireball. Right here. Yep. Uh, Cutting words. I've never cast a level six fireball before. That was pretty fucking cool. Gail's going to move back away from the door to try to get to a, at least a somewhat more safe spot. And the mystic with only one H or the mummy with only one HP remaining tries to move in, but luckily... Astarian saved against the attack. We are not noxious here, so Lazel is moving forward. Big swing. One more ancient servant at pretty full health, though. We'll try to chip away at this. I think I... 
do get another bonus action. Seven HP remaining. Starion uses his crossbows as he tucks in a little bit closer to the stairs to fire off a shot at the head of the ancient servant, getting a critical hit as well. Kalark rushes into the room. And doesn't do anything. Oh, I can toppling. I was worried because I was nauseous, I wouldn't be able to attack at all. But I think it took my attack away on the turn. So, I did all of this. Why? How does How does this help me with the painting? You did it. He's gone. He's really gone. I don't know how to thank you. We can finally be free. Here. Please take this. I think it's valuable. And I will need it. Not now, Carrion's gone. Um, I'm trying to help out one of Carrion's customers, and it's taken me a lifetime. Oscar, he's been possessed. Can you give me any clues? I don't know how to do exorcisms yet, but feel free to look through Carrion's records. Perhaps you'll find something of use there. All right, thanks for the heads up. Do you have anything to trade? Yes. I think I'll pick up where Carrion left off. He has nothing to trade. He trades nothing. What was the ring that I just got from this too? Who did you give that to? The ring we just got is, whoa, create undead level six spell. Oh, does that mean it doesn't need corpses? That's actually pretty cool. Staff of cherished necromancy. A hood of the weave. Whoa. Whoa, that's really good for Gale. Holy crap. We then have the armor of the spore keeper. <laughs> of course. Is this for spore druids? While imbued with symbiotic entity, you can spread bib bibber bang spores. Huh. As well as the veil of mourning. Undead have disadvantage on attack rolls against you, and you have advantage on saving throws against their actions. Gale, you're looking so good. Yes. Whoa, dude. We got to get him dyed up. We got to get him looking the part. You don't think it would just be sitting here in this gilded chest, do you? <gasps> Acquisition records. As well as a torch of revocation. Uh, what do these say? What follows is a musty list of items. Use client and location. Items to be acquired. Doll of the Necromancer. Reanimation. Astha Gildig. I can't read these words. They're made up. Bone of the Abyssal Depth. Soul Settlement. So, oh, Torch of Revocation. This is what we have. Burning of the Tormented Spirit's Anchor. Oscar Fervis in Baldur's Gate. So I have the torch. Do we go back to the house and and burn the painting with it? My pleasure. So ridiculous. Okay, we're almost there. This building has six fucking floors, but we've almost made it. Lazelle's still sneaking, even though she had Phantasmal Killer cast on her. Okay, do I have to wield this torch? I'm going to equip it on Gale, and I'm going to hit this painting with it. Oscar. Where is he? Where is he? Where did you go? There's something behind this door. Yes, of course. Get in there. That torch looks sick. It looks like a, like one of the Elden Ring torches. No, no, you don't. No, you, Oscar, we're here. Oh no, is that your wife? Carrie, my darling, listen to me. You brought me here. You did this. Do not interfere. He's coming home with me. Calm yourself, Shade. We can resolve this peacefully. Gale looks incredible right now. Another one who wants to control me. He called me here. Trapped me. 
sake, little childish boy! You did what? I only wished to explain myself, to make you see how... No! Enough of your whining! Enough! Selfish, arrogant bastard of an artist! I wanted to be left in peace! Well, just tell me what happened to you. And how does that help me? Or is it just to help him? Why does everything always have to revolve around Oscar Beverus? Oh, my sweet Carrie. What did I do to you? Save your tears for the ethereal play. Oh, Gail's not going to pass any of these. The Carrie Oscar spoke of was kind and gentle. This isn't the real you. We need 15. We will take Bardic. Actually, plus one charisma and persuasion proficiency. I didn't know he had that. Oh, how beautiful is that? What are you saying? You're trying to confuse me. It's so hard to think. I don't remember. Carrie, my sweet meat. I, I just uh, need to know sweet what, meat. what you did. That it wasn't my fault. Why am I here? I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be. The spirit's aura flickers, changes. She is confused, lost, dragged here unwillingly by a man who refused to let her leave. Oh, no more harm will come to you by sharing your story, but it could help Oscar. Bardic, I might only have one more of these. We need an 18. That's not an 18. It almost was rolled up. I have inspiration. Let's use it. I want to help this spirit. Five, that could do it. Rolled up to a 20. Fine. If Oscar wants the truth, he can have it. We were a fling, nothing more. My decision had nothing to do with him. I did this because I was so fucking sad. All the time. Oscar finds it easier to imagine a world where women kill themselves over him than one where they have their own bloody problems. That's horrible. I'm sorry, Kerry. I had no idea. But I, I was truly not to blame. No, you weren't. So you and your poxy paintings stay away from me. We're done, Oscar. Over. Now let me rest in bloody peace. Wow. Gods, what a mess I've made of it all. My sweet Ferelia. I've been a rotten fool, haven't I? And yet you never left my side. It will take more than a ghost to scare me away. Though I wish you'd come to me sooner. I'm still trying to wrap my head around everything that's going on here. So the house is haunted and Lady Janeth is the head of the house. Is is the painter married to Lady Janeth? And then did he have a, a like a, a fling on the side? Because upstairs in the painting room, I believe that was, it may, I think it was Lady Janeth's painting that was displayed. And then when you put his painting on the pedestal, it opens the secret door that showed the ghost of the, the girl who took her life. Um, what are you going to do now? I, I'd like to stay. I, I confess I never felt ours was a marriage of substance. I rather thought you just liked me for my art. Throughout my ordeal... I saw how tenderly you cared for me. Even at my worst, you never left my side. Truly, you were the one who saved me. I'm so sorry, my darling. The chat says, yes, his previous lover killed herself. Oscar blamed himself and had Carrion bring her back to commune with her, trapping her in that painting. Okay, that's perfect. 
Uh, Janice deserves more than an apology for what you put her through, my dude. A debt I'll spend a lifetime repaying. As for you, my noble friend, our account can be settled far more quickly. Come upstairs to my atelier. I promise you'll leave with something priceless. Immortality. Oh, he's going to paint me. <laughs> That's what he means by immortality. Kalark's like, oh, I can use immortality to to defeat the netherbrain. But that, that's not what this guy's offering is. I'll follow him upstairs. He knows this place better than me, probably. Didn't I try to buy a painting from him in Act 1, too? Here he is, the hero of the hour. Brushes are oiled, the canvas prepped, and you... Well, you're comfortable. That's the main thing. So, shall we begin? <laughs> you're comfortable. He doesn't think I'm pretty? Yes, let's do it. Yes. Well, actually, I need a moment to freshen up. Of course. Whenever. All right, hold on. Show me in my good robes, not these Act One robes. Show Kalak in all of his greatness. Yes, indeed. My crown of enlightenment still on, too. He brushes up. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Wonderful. Stand yourself just there, and... And voila! <sighs> All it needs now is a name. Something to capture the spirit in which it was created. I'd rather my name went on, and if I'm quite honest with you, Kalarko Lark does have a good ring to it. Heroic and modest, then this shall be simply the hero. Of Baldur's Gate. A title I don't doubt you'll earn in due course. Please, take it in for a moment. It's not every day one's face is preserved for posterity. I swear to God, if this is the worst painting I've ever seen, I'm going to rage quit so hard. Did he give it to me? Item received. I'm going to go I'm going to go back to camp. So this is it. Wait. What the fuck? What the fuck is this bullshit? Are you fucking kidding me? Are you... I spent two and a half hours on this quest to get a painting of the fucking vampire. Are you fucking serious? Well, thanks for stopping by the stream, everybody. I'm done. That's it. That's it. Save the game. Save the game. I'm out. Thank you for being here. I'll I'll be back again soon. This is going to take five fucking hours of my life to edit, and it's all for a goddamn picture of a vampire. Throw this thing in the trash. Where is this garbage? Huh.